New York hosts one of the largest Haitian populations in the United States. Many of them live in Brooklyn, represented by Democratic Congresswoman Yvette Clark. Congresswoman Clark, thank you very much for joining us. What are you hearing from your constituents? Wow, the, the, the level of concern, the level of um, just horror over what they've witnessed through our news reports. Uh, families are just really uh, frightened right now. They don't know whether their relatives are safe uh, and have been spared uh, in this devastating earthquake. And so the breakdown in communication, I believe, is one of the most uh, challenging part of uh, bringing some calm to this situation uh, and so people are very concerned they want to know that the US is responding and I want to commend the Obama administration for its working throughout the night and its swift call to action uh, in moving our assets into the region to help uh, the people of Haiti Congresswoman, stand by for just a moment because I've got some uh, someone on the phone who I think would might provide even more information on what's going on in Brooklyn. Uh, Ray Kelly, the New York City Police Commissioner, joins us now. He's been with Mayor Bloomberg in Brooklyn talking to the Haitian community. Uh, Commissioner, I know that you were just in Haiti last week on a mission because of your past experience in the 1990s leading the mission to train Haitian police and members of the UN peacekeeping force delegated from the United States. What did you see last week and how how can you imagine Port-au-Prince dealing with this knowing what you know about the infrastructure there well you know Andrea of course uh, you and I were together there in I guess 95 and uh, uh, you, you know you saw uh, firsthand the abject poverty and all the challenges that Haiti faced then I saw improvements uh, last week certainly as far as the police are concerned uh, they're better organized they're better trained I visited the police academy I met with President Preval, I met with our ambassador, Ambassador Mertens, uh, I met with the Justice Minister, and I met with the head of the UN uh, delegation. Now, uh, you know, so much of the optimism that uh, I felt was uh, abroad in Haiti uh, last week, of course, uh, has got to be uh, wiped out because of this uh, this terrible uh, tragedy. I was in City Soleil. Even in City Soleil, I saw some improvements. They had more roads. Uh, I know you had been there as well. It's just, uh, you know, probably the poorest, one of the poorest places in, in all of, of Haiti. But people were talking optimistically about the future there. Now, this has got to, you know, very much undermine that. I, Port au Prince just cannot handle this as as an entity uh we need the, the united states government to go there in in a big way Be, you know the you know the the population density is such the lack of services is such that the, the haitians are just not going to be able to fend for themselves in, in in this regard as i say the police force uh, was improved but they're not they're not equipped they're not focused at all on rescue or recovery there is no fire department all of that is done by by community groups there are a couple of ambulances very very few all of the the medical uh, facilities uh, the ones that, that exist are very limited in their uh, capacity to uh, you know to provide service so it is a very very uh, difficult and, and challenging time for, for Haiti and you, the prisons, we understand, the main prison there in Port-au-Prince uh, collapsed, the hospital as well. Uh, there presumably will be chaos in the streets, plus a health emergency. And as you point out, no first responders, nothing in place as in terms of government services. So they really are dependent on that one runway uh, until the ships can get there, one runway at the airport, and what we can bring in on C-130s. Right. Uh, correct. And, and I understand the port is closed but they have even even their port uh, capability is very limited uh they had one one pier there and uh i only saw uh, uh really one ship at, at the at the dock in, in haiti so um you know the runway it, it when we were there in the mid 90s it was difficult to bring 
equipment in because of the fact that there's only only one one runway. I don't know if it's been damaged. Uh, you probably have more information in that regard than uh, than I do. But just getting equipment there is going to be very very difficult. They have no heavy equipment. I hear people talking about it. I I didn't see any uh, there. And it, and if it is there, it's it's and it's other in other locations. It's extremely difficult to transport it to to Port-au-Prince. To get from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitian, a little over 100 miles away, which is a city in the north, will take you 10 hours on, on the road. The roads are in uh, horrendous shape. And, and again, uh, you know, you don't have the people to to run this uh, heavy equipment. Uh, so this is, it's, it's this very, is clearly going to have... Excuse me, Commissioner. So that means that this is going to have to be a U.S. and internationally led and U.N. led mission. The U.N. suffering, of course, a grievous loss there with the building having collapsed and uh, we think more than 100 people missing, the head of mission missing, um, more than 100 maybe dead. Uh, at this point, it'll have to be helicopters off of the USS Vincent once it gets there and U.S. troops. Uh, National Guard troops, whatever the the the, uh, the Navy that goes in, in order yeah, to get I, this done. Quite frankly, that's the only thing that uh, that I see can uh, can work. And we're the only country with that sort of manpower availability. I know the Canadians certainly have a long history in Haiti. They they have uh, very good intentions, but whether or not they can produce the equipment and the manpower needed to make a difference and do it with the speed that, that's necessary, I think, is, is questionable. So uh, it, it really comes down to the U.S. And, of course, our military is, is very much much involved in uh, in the Middle East. Uh, I don't know how much resources we have uh, available <clears throat> to uh, devote to this, but uh, there's nobody else in my judgment. Well, and you have uh, a lot of experience there on which to base that judgment. Commissioner Kelly, thank you very, very much. We hope to talk to you later uh, as we continue yeah. our coverage today for NBC Nightly News later and tonight. And Congresswoman Clark, I thought you would want to hear what the commissioner had to say. Are you committed, and the rest of Congress, I assume, committed to making sure that the resources are available to the U.S. government to spend what needs to be spent, uh, despite all of the strains on our budget and our defense posture, to get that help in, possibly for the long Long haul. Well, we, we've always been committed. Uh, the Congressional Black Caucus has been meeting, and uh, we will reaffirm that commitment. Again, want to commend the Obama administration for taking such swift action, but it has to be a sustained effort. After the search of recovery comes rebuilding, and this is a nation that is extremely poor. I mean, we can't emphasize that enough. That civil society uh, needs to have a partner in, in in the neighborhood, and that is the United States of America. And I will do everything within my power uh, to work with my colleagues to make sure that the resource and the partnership that needs to be established is, is established. Um, Haiti has uh, an infrastructure that needs to be strengthened, and I've heard from people in my constituency, uh, professionals who are geared up and prepared to take their expertise back to Haiti to make sure that in the rebuilding of the nation, a building code is established that can withstand natural disaster and that we're growing from strength to strength as opposed to rebuilding every time there's a natural disaster or crisis in the nation. Thank you so very much, Congresswoman Yvette Clark. And Thank let me you. point out that there are other ways that you can donate. UNICEF, 1-800-4-UNICEF, American Red Cross, 1-800-RED-CROSS, or online at redcross.org. Or text Haiti to 90999. That automatically donates $10 to the Red Cross relief effort. And let me just add this. Uh, just in from the United Nations, they are just now reporting that this earthquake has caused uh, damage, as we know, to the National Palace, the Cathedral, the Ministry of Justice, and other important buildings. The casualties, they say, while not estimated, are an unknown number. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands, have suffered varying degrees of destruction to their homes. Haitians, fearful of their houses collapsing, slept on the streets last night. Electric electricity supplies have been interrupted. Water is in short supply. Some major transportation routes have been severely disrupted by surface cracks, rocks and boulders, fallen trees and smashed cars. The government of Haiti 
and the UN and Haiti have appealed for immediate and extensive relief supplies and assistance from around the world. Uh, much more 